Hello everyone, uh, my name is Vít Pokorný, I am a philosopher and researcher from Czech Republic. Uh, I'm currently affiliated uh, at the Institute of Philosophy in Prague uh, and I'll give you a talk called Exploring Rhythmic Multiplicity, Embodiment of Rhythm and Rhythms of Embodiment. I'll start with some introductions. My exploration of rhythm is a part of an ongoing project that is called Phenomenological Investigation of Sonic Environments. The project is supported and financed by the Czech Grant Agency and carried out by the team of four researchers from the Institute of Philosophy in Prague. The general goal of our project is to facilitate philosophical discussions and various practices of sonic environments asking flowing questions. How are our lived sonic environments constituted and structured? What types of sonic environments are prevalent in today's global and local culture? Why and how are sonic experiences suppressed and ignored while having such massive effect on our lives? How do musical experimenters and sonic artists understand sonic experiences? What is the relation between identity and sonic experiences? And many more. To answer these questions, we organize workshops with musicians and sonic explorers. We organize and take part in interdisciplinary conferences and study groups. We read a lot of literature, of course, and prepare some studies and books to be published. This kind of research is obviously not just philosophical, but borders between philosophy, phenomenology, musicology, acoustic ecology, artistic research, media studies, and transdisciplinary sciences. In the next step, uh, I would like to explain my approach to phenomenology. In terms of phenomenology, uh, my approach relates uh, to the phenomenology of embodiment uh, originally developed by Edmund Husserl and Morris Merleau-Ponty and practiced today by many researchers and also to the asubjective phenomenology uh, of Jan Patochka and neurophenomenology of Sean Gallagher uh, and even Thompson. Uh, my approach to uh, embodiment can be summed up by three uh, interconnected concepts uh, intertwining, intercorporeality uh, and extended embodiment. Uh, Dermot Moran uh, explains uh, the concept of uh, intertwining as follows. Edmund Husserl regularly employs the image uh, of intertwining, Verflechtung, already in the logical investigations, uh, but more extensively in his major writings of the 1920s and 1930s, to express the manner in which the various strata of lived experience are in complex uh, relations of mutual foundation and interpenetration. He particularly emphasizes the intertwining uh, of lived, animate body and consciousness, or what he calls spirit. Husserl's distinct way of describing uh, this intertwining between body and consciousness, especially in his ideas too, was picked up by Morris Merleau-Ponty and re-articulated in numerous reconceptualizations, including most famously intertwining and Kaizen, especially uh, in the posthumously published uh, The Visible and the Invisible and Associated working notes. Once uh, we think from the intertwining in this sense, a new domain opens for us, a domain uh, that is neither objective nor subjective, a domain that my colleague Martin Nietzsche calls transitive. This transitive domain, as I understand it, is the relational domain, domain of perceiving and acting bodies or machines, as Deleuze and Gattery would say, 
that are intertwined within their environments and with each other. In this respect, the transitive domain has a lot of, uh, in common with the concept of intercorporeality, as I understand it, in my book called Psychonautical, a transdisciplinary interpretation of psychedelic experiences. An intercorporeality is comprised here not as a sum of individual bodies, but as an encompassing relational environment which includes uh, metabolic and communication interrelations between perceiving, growing and dying beings and intertwining of bodies and their environments. Each individual body grows up in this elemental intercorporeality like a mushroom in mycelium. Our bodies grow in the bodies of other humans and subsist on the bodies of other living beings representing a segment in the network of local and global metabolic processes. Environments co-inhabited by interacting organisms permeate them in the form of nutrients and elements, include them as their own parts. My conscious organic body is not separate and closed and stable system. Instead, it is an open, unstable system subsisting through the uh, sympoietic intertwinement with other living systems. The concept of environment as it was used here leads to the concept of extended embodiment since environments, organic, inorganic, cultural and industrial are necessarily the part of intercorporeality. As our experiences are always relations, connections to other things and beings they do not happen somewhere inside our brains, but outside in the world, in interconnection and communication and mutual penetration with things and events of the world. Therefore, um, a phenomenological exploration of rhythm is interested uh, in the rhythmic intertwining of corporeal, perceptual, ecological, social and cultural rhythms and it attempts to describe sonic lives as polyrhythmic or multirhythmic. It attempts to travel through the rhythmic multiplicity that we co-create and are part of. Uh, the concept of rhythm is notoriously difficult to define since it pertains uh, to so many areas and is virtually omnipresent. Uh, so the first thing one has to do in phenomenology is to observe and describe uh, rhythmic experiences and events and determine how they pertain to various layers of our existence. Music is the domain most commonly associated with the rhythm. In terms of music we can define rhythm as a pattern of sounds and silences. But of course, rhythm uh, pertains to all other types of artistic expression like dance, poetry, writing, architecture, or painting. Regarding uh, artistic expression, uh, there are also many conceptual complications, as the seemingly simple concept of rhythm very soon breaks up into its various segments and neighborhoods such as beat, repetition, fluctuation, pulse, rhyme, pattern, frequency, regularity, temp tempo, cycle, vibration, time and many more. It follows uh, that rhythmic phenomena are not limited to music or sound and they even transcend uh, perceptual domain. There are personal bodily rhythms uh, as the heartbeat, respiration, metabolism, or rhythm of our uh, movement. Uh, there are social rhythms of work and leisure, of school time and free time, of daily routine and holidays, and uh, many more. Uh, 
there are uh, so-called circadian uh, rhythms uh, connected to the movement of our planet to daily cycles of sunset and dawn and all other types of rhythms uh, connected to them diurnal, ultradian or infradian uh, there are also countless biological rhythms uh, within our body, within our organs like uh, repeated firing of neurons various biological clocks that determine inner functions of our organs Mm, and so on. There are, of course, uh, big nature rhythms uh, like uh, the rhythm of growth and decay, of maturation and fading, uh, and many more. Uh, there are certainly very important uh, mechanical rhythms uh, connected to clocks, computers radio waves uh, and other machines. Uh, it follows that rhythm is embodied in so many different ways that it is uh, very uh, uneasy to uh, bring forward uh, a general concept of rhythm that comprises all these uh, different uh, occurrences of rhythmic experience and rhythmic events. It is clear that various rhythmic phenomena can be described and ordered in accordance with the layers of our lives, yet uh, from a different phenomenological perspective. Uh, rhythm can be explained as inner dynamic of appearing itself. The Belgian phenomenologist Mark Rashier uh, attempted to explore this transcendental side of rhythm in his study on Husserl published in 1989, particularly in the text called Passive Synthesis and Temporalization Spatialization. The passive synthesis uh, is the process that occurs before or behind any subjective experience. It is not a constitution of a concrete conceptually or perceptually graspable and definite experience by the constitution of the stream of experience itself. Rishir criticizes uh, Husserl's analysis of inner time consciousness. The inner time consciousness in Husserl lays the condition uh, of possibility of appearing. Without it there would be no phenomena at all. But in Husserl, there is the idea of presence, uh, criticized, for example, uh, by Derrida. Uh, the idea of fundamental moment that is still unmoving and static. Rishir tries to show that no such stable, unmoving presence is possible, that in the heart, of the moment there must already be movement and that movement is the fundamental rhythm of presence and non-presence of appearing and disappearing before appearance itself uh, a basic ontological pulse which foregrounds the possibility of subjective phenomena uh, therefore Rhythmicity itself must be something pre-phenomenal, something that pertains to the pre-conceptual, pre-subjective domain of passive synthesis, to the domain of constitutions of constitution of phenomenality. Rhythm is not phenomenal, it doesn't appear 
but it is something which holds phenomena together it's phenomenological it gives them structure it allows them to appear without conceptual or perceptual unity that would precede it rhythmicity is thus something structural or transcendental in Husserlian sense it is the condition of possibility of our perception movement and life itself considering uh, that rhythmic phenomena are part of virtually all levels of our existence and that rhythm has even transcendental or ontological importance we also need to ask the question of ethical side of rhythm There are uh, already at least two great works on this topic uh, which thematize the problem of rhythmic equilibrium or balance and ask the question of good and bad rhythmic environments. One of them uh, is uh, the time and rhythms of emancipatory education and it deals with the problem of acceleration speed uh, and slowness in terms uh, of our daily social rhythms in the context of uh, contemporary education. The second one uh, is the sonic warfare, sounds, effect uh, and the ecology of fear, which is highly complex exploration of sonic and rhythmic consequences of our contemporary global uh, culture, politics and industry. Both uh, these books uh, approach the problem of uh, rhythm ethics from the perspective of rhythmic multiplicity. They stress uh, the interdependence and mutual influence of discursive, technological, social and corporeal rhythms. And they both ask similar question, that is, how to establish a rhythmical balance, be it the balance of social time rhythms or the balance of symbolic and technological vibes and movements. They ask the question of justice between physiological and psychological, cultural and natural individual and collective rhythms of our being. The main question of the written act is then the question of equilibrium between continuity and discontinuity, between utility and community. Is something like that possible? And how to achieve in our current stabilized and disrupted situation in which all the well known writings are really written and In this respect, we can consider two extreme rhythmic models. One is the model of a rigid, unchanging repetition which does not allow for any freedom or any change, like the rhythm of a factory or concentration camp. The other one is completely chaotic, unstructured life which fluctuates between completely dissonant rhythms and has no stable structure at all. Both these models are in the end contrary to our well-being.